So blockchain is the underlying technology behind Bitcoin. Uh, and, and, and look, the jury is, is out on whether or not Bitcoin is going to survive. But blockchain is here to stay. Uh, blockchain is very, very, the applications are almost endless. So the deal is, in its simplest terms, uh, the blockchain is a distributed public ledger. Here's the deal. Uh, in Bitcoin, every transaction of every Bitcoin, every transaction that's ever been done with Bitcoin is, excuse me, is uh, recorded in the blockchain. And the blockchain, so in other words, it's a block of transactions which is added to the chain of previous blocks. So every time there's a new block of transactions anywhere around the world, they're created somewhere. There's a whole mechanism, but we don't need to get into those details. And once that block is complete, it is added to the blockchain. And then the next block is created, it's added to the blockchain. And the blockchain is maintained on thousands of nodes all around the world, all independently operated. In other words, it's unhackable. It's unhackable because you can't hack thousands of nodes simultaneously. It's not possible. And that these, these nodes are constantly verifying with each other that the blockchain is the same in all places. It's an unhackable algorithm. What does that mean? It means it's a, 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 effective, not an algorithm, but it's effectively a trust algorithm. It's an architecture, it's a software architecture that allows transactions of value to be maintained in, an, in a place that is unhackable, which means right now all the, these transactions are constantly being maintained by some sort of intermediary, like a bank or a credit card company or a, a county clerk's office for, par, for, for property transitions or whatever. We don't need any of that when it can all be done on the blockchain because it's an unhackable, uncensorable, unstoppable reality. Once it's on the blockchain, it's in a million different locations, it's going to go. You can't hack it, you can't stop it. Very, very fascinating. Right? And it's, it's a little bit of a, it screws with your mind. It's hard to get your head around, at least it is for me, to understand what it's all about. But the, the, the fact, you know, the Bitcoin reality is fairly simple. We're just talking about basic transactions. But there's all kinds of startups which are emerging in the block. You see, here's who's, here's who's uh, at risk. Banks, insurance companies, uh, county clerk's offices, any credit card companies, any kind of intermediary is, uh, is at risk. And there's also, and, and so the, and the interesting thing is that the people who are most at risk are the ones who are investing the most money into it. So all the investments, all the VC capital, all of the, the angel money, it's coming from banks, it's coming from insurance companies because they're trying to stake out a claim to coexist with the blockchain because they see, like for example, remittances. Uh, the Philippines, the government of the Philippines is investing in the blockchain because it allows expats, people who are Filipino people all around the world, to send money back home without giving 12% to Western Union. Uh, and instead it just goes, it's like sending money through an email, right? So and there's a huge opportunity. So Philippines, which is a, a developing nation, has an incentive to develop the blockchain which will inevitably threaten potentially the banking system in the developed world. Uh, and, and all sorts of developing nations are following the Philippines' lead because they see the opportunity in remittances. So the, the, this is coming fast and furious.